Hi there guys, welcome back to yet another video on auxiliary views. Um, today we have a little instruction that we have to follow and we've been provided with an auxiliary view already. Take note that the bottom left hand corner has been highlighted as point A and they've highlighted it into or on the actual isometric box. You will then have to realize that point or from point A to B is the distance from A to B on the isometric box. From B to C will give me my height on my isometric box from A to D or from B to C, which is that distance from there to there. Okay, now that we've covered that, uh, first things first, I'm going to highlight the importance of center lines. Center lines are obviously giving me the center of my object, and I'd like to go ahead and put that center line straight into the surface or on the surface that I'm going to be using. Okay, so already they are giving you an indication of which direction this shape is going to be uh, drawn at. And uh, let's go read the actual instruction. Instruction says, use the auxiliary view given to draw an isometric pyramid. Remember, this is going to be a pyramid. Using the corner A, Remember the importance of this corner A as your lowest point. So if it's the lowest point, you can't have B down below here. It has, has to be higher than the point A. Okay, so in this case here, a, B is higher than A. The construction box in which the pyramid will fit has already been provided. Please remember to include all necessary center lines. Okay, so let's go and include the necessary center lines. Obviously, our center line is going to be giving us the midpoint of BC or the line BC. I'm going to go down or finding BC on the isometric box. Uh, SolidWorks actually kindly presents me with a midpoint. I'm going to be drawing a 30 degree line from there. Right through. And I'd like to present that as a final line. Going to need to extend this line slightly just so that I know I'm breaking that line. Great. Right, the next center line that I'm going to be drawing is going to be a vertical one. I'm going to find the center of this line over here and I'm going to be pushing a center line through that object at a vertical or just a vertical line. There we go. I think about now it's quite clear on which surface the actual um, hexagonal shape is going to be drawn. Let me highlight it for you. There's the actual surface on which the hexagonal shape is going to be drawn. Remember, we're going from a 2D shape to a 3D shape. So we are working with 30 degree angles in our asymmetric box. Right. We know that one of the points are going to be on the actual center line so we're lucky we can go ahead and stipulate exactly where that point is and obviously between a and b we have found the point that corner is going to be exactly where the center line meets the parameter of our symmetric box between b and c though we don't have the same instance we don't have a corner at that point over there we have a corner slightly higher and a corner slightly lower what you're going to do is you're going to open up your ruler or take your ruler from B and go and measure to that point over there. Same from C and measure from that point over there. This line over here will in fact be equal to this line over here from B to this corner over here. Or open up your compass from B to the first point and you'll simply take your compass across to B and mark it off on this line over here. Take note that you must mark these two points off between B and C. 
find B and C on the isometric circle. B, sorry, not the isometric circle, the isometric square. Between B and C, you will find these two points. Okay, because I don't have a compass to measure from or work with, I'm going to be using a smart tool, a smart dimension tool. I'm going to first draw two lines. And I'm going to go and measure from this point to that point. It's going to give me that distance over there. And I'll make sure that this distance is, in fact, the same. Right, I have a point there. Okay, so I've found that point over here and that point over there. If I wanted to, I could take my, my, my 30 degree set square. And I can simply go from this point over here and construct the line straight across to that side over there. My 30 degree set square again. From the point found right across to the opposite side. Let's clean this up slightly. Okay, so there we have a point there and there. Right, so now that we've found the points, let's go and join the points. I have an intersecting point here. Sorry, wrong point. From here to here. From here there. From there there. And all the way up. Right, now that I've actually plotted this surface on my 3D shape or my isometric box, I've got to take note that this is actually a pyramid. Right, so the center of my shape is going to play a big role over here. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to go and take the center line and find the center of the surface over here. If I can find the, the center of the surface over here, I'll be able to find the apex of my pyramid, the very tip top of my pyramid. You might notice that this pyramid is actually lying down to the side, to the right hand side. Okay, so I'm going to take my center lines. In your case, you'll simply go and find the center of these lines over here and you'll find for instance, that center point over there, and you will redraw your center lines. Okay, take note what I've done. I've actually just taken a 30 degree line, projected my where my uh, center line intersects with my uh, parameter of the isometric square. And I'm just going to be simply projecting my center lines down as well. All right, now this seems to have been a little bit of a longer process, but um, 
in your case it'll be a lot quicker because you'll obviously just go ahead and go find the center of the parameter or the surface in the front right now that I have found the center I know that each one of these corners will simply join up to that that intersecting point that center point which is going to be my apex Right. Now that I've joined each one of those corners to the apex, I've got to realize that there's certain lines that I'm not going to be able to see. For instance, this one over here and this one in the back over here. So I'm going to change those to be construction. And obviously, if hidden detail is required, then you will, you will simply use um, a hidden detail line. Right, that would be the final shape. Right guys, so please note that if you are finding any point of your auxiliary view between two points, just go ahead and measure them. Take that same measurement and plot them on that line that you found on your actual 3D shape or your isometric box. Uh, once you've found the actual points, read the question whether it's a pyramid or a prism. If it's a pyramid, it obviously has an apex. Um, go find the center of the shape, which will be uh, on the actual 3D shape, and project that same center across to the front surface or to any surface opposite the one that you are being or that you are actually drawing on. And uh, you will then be able to go and link each one of these corners to that apex to give you the view that you need. Thank you for joining me yet again in Auxiliary Views to Asymmetric Drawings.